Hey everybody, Joe from Complete Carnivore. And today's Saturday. On Wednesday, I'm gonna be serving 75 people a big barbecue meal. We got uh, three briskets, we're gonna do four pork butts. For side dishes, we got potato salad, collard greens, uh, coleslaw, um, baked beans, and biscuits. And we're doing some, uh, ch some cherry cobblers, some blackberry cobblers, and some banana pudding for desserts. So we got a lot of cooking to do over the next few days. And I kind of wanted to bring you along with me. I'm not going to be showing you everything I do. I'm not going to be, uh, some, some of the videos are going to be just little quick clips and, and but it's, it's going to be kind of the full process. I'm going to show you what I can and, and when I remember to film and stuff like that. Lighting is not going to be good. Edits won't be good, but you can kind of see what goes into cooking for 75 people. Right now we need to make the rub for our pork butts. Um, I really like this Meathead Memphis Meat Dust recipe. I still print out my recipes. I, I don't like using them on my phone. I think it's, my phone always turns off and you get your phone all messy and sticky. So I print out recipes. We got a whole stack of them here. These are some of our favorites that we use regularly. But uh, yeah, we're making a whole bunch of this rub. Usually you buy a container of rub. It costs like 12, 12 bucks or so, 10 bucks. And it's usually half salt. This, there's no salt in this rub. I salt the meat ahead of time. But like all these ingredients here, I got in the bulk section at my local market. All in all, we're looking at maybe 13 bucks for, for the ingredients. This is gonna make a lot more than one little jar of rub. We're gonna have a lot of stuff here because we got four pork butts and then in a couple weeks I'm doing four more pork butts. So a lot of stuff going going on. Uh, but yeah, tonight I am, I did, we did, I did most of the shopping today. Got almost everything I needed. Hopefully, I won't have to make more than another run or two to the uh, grocery store over the next couple days. Our freezers and fridges are packed. So, uh, we don't have room for much more. Uh, we got bags and all kinds of stuff sitting around. I overbought in the paprika. I only needed a cup and I got like four cups. So, uh, that's quite a bit. Next thing, we need half a cup of garlic. I'm pretty sure this is the garlic. And in some ways, things like this, I'd rather buy a little bit more, throw away 25 cents worth of extra garlic than to keep this bag floating around the kitchen. So uh, that's kind of how I handle it. Need a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, tonight, like I said, I did most of the shopping today. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna make the rub, make the sauces. The sauces are usually better if they have a, a couple days to kind of sit and blend in, in, the, in the fridge. So we'll make sure we have time for that. And then what am I gonna do tomorrow? I don't, I don't have too much planned for tomorrow. Uh, Monday, I'm gonna get all the meat prepped. So I'm gonna trim the briskets. Uh, the pork butts are, are boneless ones from, uh, um, this is onion powder, by the way. Uh, boneless butts from Costco. So we need to tie those up. And I like to dry brine my meat, so I salt it a couple days ahead of time. And then I'll let it sit in the fridge. Where's my black pepper? We need four tablespoons of black pepper next. Um, so I let the meat sit, so I'll be doing that Monday. Um, if I get bold, I might go ahead and make potato salad on Monday, but I have that planned for Tuesday. I'll get the beans ready um, on Tuesday as well. Get the coleslaw. Uh, I think it's better when it has a day or so in the fridge rather than fresh. What do we need next? Ginger. Yeah, that's what we need. Uh, and then Tuesday night, about midnight, I'm going to start cooking the meat. Usually takes about 12 to 14 hours. So it'll be ready Wednesday sometime around noon, maybe a little bit later than that. I'll put it in the coolers and it will just sit there and wait for us to eat around 6 o'clock. So I'd rather have it done. Uh, a couple hours early than even 15 minutes late. So I make sure I give myself plenty of time on the, on the, on the cooks. Um, I, the last six or seven I've done have all been right around two hours or 12 hours. So I don't expect it to be much different than that. Um, Wednesdays we'll, we'll also make the desserts. We'll make the cobblers. Oh, rosemary powder. Uh, this is just some ground up rosemary leaves. And that's the rub. That's the rub I use for my pork butts. You can use any of the commercial rubs. Nothing wrong with any of them. 
well some of them there are but uh my favorite for pork butts would be something like honey hog from meat church uh it's it's kind of a sweeter rub like i said this saw so this one had three cups of sugar so there's a lot of sugar in this which helps get a really nice bark on the meat um but i kind of go 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 usually sweeter when i do pork when i do ribs when i do uh pork butts um but yeah like i said the uh, the 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 meat church honey hog is good hardcore carnivore has a sweet rub uh, that I really really like they also have a red. It's a little bit not quite as sweet, but still delicious uh, Would have liked a bigger bowl for this um, The uh, uh, Malcolm Reed's uh, Just standard the barbecue rub is, is a great one for stuff like this um, So yeah, I'm just gonna mix this up Get all these chunks out Might even get the hand mixer and make this a bit quicker But you just mix this all up and then this will be ready to go I should have plenty to do all the pork butts that I need to do. Uh, this is way more than I thought it would make, actually. But um, So, yeah, I'm going to keep working on this. I'll come back tonight a little bit later, show you some of the sauces. Uh, we'll see if I want to show any of the process of that. They're pretty simple. Again, the sauces I'm going to make, I'll show you right now, actually. There's the Lexington dip, which is pretty much vinegar, ketchup, and, hot, and uh, red pepper flake. Just a kind of a spicy, vinegary thing. Uh, it's great on pork. I usually don't like any of the sauces on pork or brisket. Definitely not, not on brisket. Sometimes I put a little bit of sauce. Kansas City, people like the Kansas City style, just kind of the sweet standard ketchup, molasses, honey, uh, that kind of flavor. And then this one might be my favorite, the Carolina Gold Mustard Sauce. Kind of a South Carolina mustard sauce recipe. Um, I, there's a couple things in here that I leave out and I don't think it really misses much, but those are the three sauces I'm doing. Again, they're from, uh, amazingribs.com. Uh, they got a lot of great different barbecue recipes. I like using, starting, at least starting with a lot of theirs and kind of modifying them as I go. If I'm missing an ingredient, a minor ingredient anyway, it's not the end of the world. Uh, and if I want to change it, if I want something sweeter, if I want something more vinegary or tangier, uh, they're all easy to, to modify. For what you want uh they also have a great membership club uh where you can go chat with a bunch of people like me that love barbecue but uh yeah amazing ribs is where i get a lot of the my sauce and rub recipes that sort of thing and again usually they're just starting points and i modify them from there as i see fit you can go online and find hundreds of different barbecue sauce recipes um so just find one you like and and, and go with it so uh, I won't bore you with the rest of this, but this is pretty much done. I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and then uh, when I season the pork butts on Monday, I'll kind of show you, show you that. I'll show, me, show you, I'll show myself processing the meat and getting it ready to go. Uh, there's not a lot to it, but I'll show that. But yeah, I'll be <clears throat> checking in over the next four days, five days, and, and we'll see how this whole process comes together. This is the, I think the third time I've cooked for this group. And uh, it's turned out great every time. And we loved it, had a, had a fun time doing it. So uh, we'll be back in a bit. All right, we got our Lexington dip mixed up. Like I said, basically ketchup, vinegar, sugar. Uh, what else we got in there? Apple juice, red pepper flake, pepper, black pepper. So it's kind of a sweet, tangy, vinegary sauce. I love putting it in bottles like this. I got a six pack of these from my restaurant supply store for like 13 bucks um for most sauces this is fine uh it depends how chunky your sauce is you might need to trim the tip up with the red pepper flake i found that sometimes if you don't trim it the flakes get stuck so i usually like to cut i don't know right about there give it a fairly wide opening and you don't want the tip to fall in your sauce obviously uh but yeah that should let any red pepper flakes come out so then We'll just fill these bottles up and see if I could do it without spilling a ton of it all over the place. I think I want to fill two bottles about halfway so they can be on two different tables. I'll trim the lid on this one in a minute. We'll just get it filled up for now. Let's see how much we're getting this. This is one, most people, when they see this on the table, they don't really gravitate towards it. They're not really too sure about the vinegariness and 
how it's not like a thick normal barbecue sauce but if you're a carolina person you know what you know what this is all about oh there we go we've got them filled up more than i thought we would but yeah this is it, it this is a perfect sauce for for pulled pork um that's pretty much all i like it on so uh it, it's good to educate people on the different kinds of sauces let them know what they need let's get this one trimmed up i usually like to put a piece of plastic under the lid too so they don't spill and slosh too much like that um so yeah these sauces are ready to go got two more to make all right this is the mustard sauce all done this one has a couple of unique ingredients it has chicken bullion in it which is kind of weird it uses tomato paste uh, i guess in place of ketchup you could probably use ketchup if you wanted to maybe take a little bit less sugar than you normally would so if you don't have tomato paste and you're making it there's a few things i had this is the uh, kansas city sauce it's the only cook sauce of the bunch um this one has some sauteed onions in it you can see little chunks in there i'm probably going to hit it with the immersion blender just to blend those up uh, a bit um but i ran out of hot sauce i ran out of molasses so i had to improvise i had to use it i usually use frank's red hot for for stuff like this just kind of the most basic good hot sauce you can get so i had to pull out some of the some little fancier hot sauces i have that have a little bit different flavor profile but still should be good um and instead of molasses, I just thought, let's use some dark brown corn syrup. Some dark corn syrup. So, uh, Worcestershire sauce. Another thing, this one calls for like half a cup of Worcestershire. But I didn't have it. But it also calls for steak sauce. Which I never really use on a steak. Uh, but I'm guessing they just want kind of that umami flavor in there. Uh, that you get from the Worcestershire from the steak sauce. So I just use a little bit more steak sauce. Um, let's give this one a taste. See if I can do it without burning myself. Again, this is... Kind of the, the classic sweet, sticky barbecue sauce that uh, that you get pretty much everywhere, so. Yeah, that's good. Um, the recipe is variable. It calls for like anywhere from a third to like a cup and a third of honey. I went with about a cup. I wanted this one fairly sweet. I'm gonna use this sauce in my uh, baked beans as well. So I wanted those kind of more on the sweet side. There's a little bit of kick, there's some vinegary taste in there so it's definitely got more going on than like your standard sweet baby rays or or use your standard grocery store bottled sweet barbecue sauce very very delicious sauce and this mustard sauce might be my favorite of the bunch my wife really loves it she tasted it and is really looking forward to it that's perfect tangy vinegary it's got there's like a cup and a half of sugar in it so again we're talking pretty sweet sauce here but perfect amount of tang this goes great on pork if you're doing <clears throat> excuse me if you're doing like pork sliders or um sandwiches great sauce to put on there so all the sauces are done the rub's done we're moving on to tomorrow i don't even i forget what i'm doing tomorrow i know there's some prep i gotta do tomorrow but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so thanks for watching and and we'll, we'll keep going with this i don't know how long this video is going to end up being but like i said i got three four more days of cooking to go Time to start getting some collard greens prepped for our big dinner. I usually like to take out the stem. That part will never really get tender. And then you're pretty much cut in half, so I'll stack them all up and give them a little cut here in a bit. I like my, some people like their collards like really finely chopped and, and almost like chiffonaded. I like them a little bit bigger pieces. We don't get too many collard greens up here in the Northwest. They're mostly a Southern thing. I remember when I lived in Florida, when we first got there, we went to a, oh, there's like a whole stock. I've never seen it attached like that. We went to a farmer's market and there was a old lady sitting in the back corner tearing up collard greens for, uh, you could buy them already pre-chopped, which nobody up here does that, but it made me, it's one thing I would miss about Florida is having being able to go to the market and get a whole bag of chopped up collard greens all ready to go and not have to do this part yourself. So, um, so yeah, I, I usually like, she was doing it all by hand. I don't want to cut it by hand. So I just do that, kind of roll them up, chop them into pieces like that. Again, th th these will shrink down. These will cook way, way down. Um, a lot of people 
cook collard greens and other similar greens for way, way, way too long. They'll go for <clears throat> a couple hours and then they just get mushy and uh, some of the funky flavor compounds, sulfury things start coming out. So I usually like to cook mine for about 45 minutes. What I'll do though is uh, probably on Tuesday, you'll see this. Um, I'll put some ham hocks in some chicken broth and just let those cook away for, th those will cook for two or three hours until I get nice and tender, the meat falls off the bone. I'll take that meat, chop it all up, put it back in the broth, uh, add a little bit of salt. I don't like adding garlic. I don't like adding onions. Some people do, uh, it's just not my thing. We'll put all that back in the pot and then uh, heat up the, the broth and the collards. And again, they, they, they simmer for about 45 minutes or so. And they, they, there's still some good uh, texture on the greens, <clears throat> but they're still tender enough to eat. They got that nice smoky porky flavor to them. And I think they're delicious. I, I'm a huge fan of collard greens. And the uh, the broth, the pot liquor, what is what it's called, uh, that ends up being wonderful as well. Uh, when you get some of these smaller ones, you don't really need to take out the stem, but I usually do it anyway. Uh, so we got, I think I got 12 bundles of greens to go. So it's gonna be a while. We'll just do that one like that. So we'll roll this one up and chop it. And there you have it. So the pieces will be like that and they'll shrink down to about half the size. But uh, ends up being great. Uh, we'll give them a spin here once we get this full. Wash them up, put them back in the fridge. And that's kind of how you prep collard greens. So the, again, these are gonna cook in a couple days. I'm just getting them prepped now so it'll take up less room in the fridge mostly. So uh, do you, if you like collard greens, let me know, leave a comment. I would love to hear what you think of collards. I know some people hate them. I remember when I was a kid, my parents would make greens and they would kind of boil them for way, way, way too long in, in, in like vinegar, uh, vinegar and sugar. Uh, mostly they do it with spinach, but sometimes they, we had some Swiss chard in the garden, they do it with that too. And I hated that, but I love collard greens like this. This is more what the collard greens are usually like, the leaf size. Those other ones were pretty small, but you can see these ones here are, are much, much bigger. So. Just wanted to jump back on quick and show you what size the collard greens usually are. All right, we got Saturday, we did the shopping, we did the rubs, we did the sauce. Yesterday was Sunday, I didn't do too much. I got some onions, some uh, red onions pickling. Uh, just, it's, uh, what was the recipe? I think I shoved like two large red onions, sliced up, maybe three, into a jar, used like one part vinegar, one part water, and half part of sugar, and then some salt. Got those pickling. And today we're gonna be getting the meat all ready. First thing we're gonna do is pork butts. These are uh, boneless pork butts. I kinda like the boneless more than the bone-in. Don't ask me really why. Um, it seems like with a bone-in, there's always a muscle right underneath the bone that um, takes a long time to get tender, but the boneless ones, you do have to wrap them uh, to tie them up, uh, which I don't think is that much of a problem, but either one's fine, they both work. I kind of just prefer the boneless because that's what they sell at Costco, and they're 249 a pound, so decent price. Uh, if you watch sales and stuff at other stores, you can sometimes get them cheaper, but they usually aren't this big. And I've always had good, looks with, good luck with Costco pork butts. I don't really do much trimming. Uh, might take a little bit of stuff that's sticking out but i don't i don't really trim the fat cap or anything uh it's, this one doesn't have a huge fat cap uh it's a little bit thick but i think it will be just fine what i do like to do with almost all my meat before i smoke it is dry brine it so we'll give it some salt and then we'll tie it up i might get some paper towels and dry this off a bit let's get these yeah, let's, we'll pat it dry a little bit. These have been sitting, uh, my fridge has been full, so I've had these in a cooler with some ice for a couple days, and they're still plenty cold. So if you ran out of freezer space, use a cooler and some ice, and you'll be just fine. But uh, I like, like I said, I'm dry brining this. Uh, the idea is that the salt penetrates the meat and seasons all of it. And since this is already cut up, 
or cut open, might as well give some salt on the inside too. Give it kind of a head start. Um, this is a big chunk of meat. I mean, this is, this whole thing is like 17 pounds. So you're looking at eight pounds here, eight and a half pounds, somewhere in that vicinity. It can take a lot of salt before you really over salt this. And if you remember that rub that I made has no salt on it, no salt in it. So this is where I give it my salt. That's why I like salt free rubs. Um, Cause you can pre salt it, dry brine it, and then just put the rub on as you normally would. If the rub had salt, I'd probably put a little less on right now and then just wait for the salt that's in the rub. So like I said, it's gonna be kind of hard to over salt this. You really have to try. I've put, I don't know, maybe a half cup of salt on here. Maybe a little less than that, but quite a bit. And now we get to tie it up. I usually use three strings per. This part here always kind of seems to flap out a bit. So I like to kind of tie that part up. I don't do any super fancy knots. Usually just loop it over twice. Kind of pull it tight. And then tie it again. And you can cut off the extra strings. I usually use three strings per pork butt. That way I know when I'm getting ready to pull it and cut it up, I need to take three strings off. I don't have to wonder if I did four, if I did two. I usually do three. I do like two this way and then sometimes I like to come a kind of a diagonal across just to kind of hold that corner in. But this kind of gives it a little bit more of a uniform shape. Let's wrap this one more time. A little bit more of a uniform shape. It helps it smoke a little bit more evenly. And it keeps, again, since these are boneless, they've been had the bone cut out of them. So this just helps everything stay together. And like I said, let's do one more kind of diagonal here and tie this corner up. And that's about it. Like I said, I got four of these to do. So another 15, 20 minutes and I'll be done with that. And then later, I don't know when I'll do them. I got three briskets I got to trim up. And I'll kind of show you that. I don't claim to be an expert brisket trimmer. I don't get too stressed out about getting a brisket perfectly trimmed, but you can see that process later. Uh, one good thing about trimming briskets, and uh, I'll probably talk more about this when I do it, you can save all the good scraps, all the good pieces you cut off and grind them into burgers. So you don't need to be afraid of uh, trying to make sure you get as much meat left as possible. Just grind it up and make a burger out of it if, if you uh, cut off some good lean parts. But we'll talk about that later when we get to brisket. Right now we're doing pork butts. So I don't think you need to see me do the rest of them. Probably won't be much different on the others. Again, there's just a little bit of stuff sticking out. We'll salt this up, we'll tie it up, and we'll go get the next pack. Time to trim the briskets up, get these salted and ready to go. Snake River Farms, American Wagyu Black briskets. These are the good ones. Well, I guess the gold is a little better than the black, but uh, yeah, definitely better than uh, standard Costco brisket. They cost about 160 bucks or so. I think this is a, this is a 14.4 pounder. So let's see if we can get it out of the package without dripping juice all over my foot. That's always a, a good thing to do. If you've never had one of the Snake River Farms briskets, wow, that's a lot of juice. Uh, they are wonderful. They are very well marbled. They always come out great texture. There's enough, I uh, almost lost it. Let's just go dump this in the sink. All right, now we can go into the trash. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, they always come out great. Great flavor, great texture on these. Um, they're, they're usually trimmed or butchered pretty well. So it uh, does need some trimming. This is always a good place to start and just kind of see what we're working with. So I am not an expert brisket trimmer by any means. If you want to learn how to trim a brisket, go watch some other videos. There's plenty of them out there. 
I basically just try to take off the stuff I don't want to cook. Um, I usually start, let's look at the back of this, see what we got. There's always this big chunk of fat right here. I like taking that down a bit. Again, I'm not an expert brick brisket trimmer. Uh, I just kind of hack my way through it. I used to try to leave as much meat as possible on the briskets I can, but any good stuff I trim off, I'm just gonna grind up. There's a big chunk of fat on the end here. I'm gonna grind up and turn into burgers. So that's a pretty thin flat we got going on here. So it'll be interesting to see how this turns out when we trim it up, see how much of it we lose. But again, if I lose quite a bit, that's gonna be okay. It's not going to be the end of the world because I will be able to grind it up into burgers. So I don't necessarily worry too much about a lot of, a lot of this little fat on the back. If it can come up easily, I'll take it off, but I don't have to get all of it off. Some people trim that part up more than I do. Uh, we're going to take this little bit off here. It's kind of hanging out. And this is one of the thinner flats I've seen on a Snake River Farms brisket. So we're gonna have to take off quite a bit of this. Let's go right there and see what we're looking at. It's still pretty thin. Since it's so thin, I might leave a bit more fat cap on than I usually would. We'll try to take it down a bit, but I don't wanna take off too much. We still wanna have enough good meat to eat. So we got three briskets to trim up, so hopefully the other ones will have a little bit thicker flat. That's one of the things, if I'm at Costco looking through the case of briskets, one of the things I'll primarily look for is the thickness of the flat. Um, I look for the size. I like to get 14 to 16 pounds, kind of in that range. I think those ones end up cooking up, cooking up great. They cook up better than big ones. I don't like small ones to cook up if you're putting the time and effort into it why cook a little one when you can cook one that's a little bit bigger you can start getting too big and it takes way too long to cook i don't like waiting around that long so we'll trim up take this fat down a little bit more did i scalp yep i scalped it i do that from time to time again i'm not an expert i just make briskets for fun yeah this flat is really really thin it is one of the more disappointing Snake River Farms briskets I've had, so we're just gonna keep taking some off until we get decent thickness. So hopefully the next ones will be better. I don't wanna film the whole video of me trimming the next ones, but I will show you if they're, if the flat is a little better. So now we got a bunch of fat up here we gotta deal with. Let's take off this end. See what we're working with here. Usually they're trimmed up a bit better than this again this is probably one of the more disappointing snake river farms briskets i've had doesn't have a big hump on it but we're having to trim away quite a bit of stuff here it's usually not quite this much so i think we're still looking okay here smooth this part out a bit I don't really care too much if I get a little bit of spots there. Got a big hunk of fat right here. Let's take some of that down. Take a little more of that down. I think it's looking pretty good. Let's take a little bit more off up here and see how we're looking. Again, I am not perfect at this. Probably take off more stuff than I should at some points and don't take off enough at others. Um, try to even these out a bit here. Trim off a little more there. There's not a lot of lean I'm trimming off here. I mean, little bits here and there. So there won't be a ton of burger grind coming from that, but maybe the other ones will need a little more. A little chunk of fat here in the corner. Try to round this off a bit. Yeah. 
I'm not extremely happy with this brisket. But you know what? You got to work with what you got. It'll taste great. Cook just might be a little bit wonky since this is so thin down here. If I wasn't cooking for a big crowd, I would probably take it off to about here. I just cut that off. I still might do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That's just so thin. It's going to be hard to get that to cook right. Round that up. That's looking better. That's more what you want to see. You want to see at least an inch thick on that. So, it's sad to have to cut a chunk of meat, but this is just so thin right here that wouldn't cook well. All right, let's get this on a rack, on a pan, and let's get it salted. We're salting a couple days ahead of time. Give the salt some chance to uh, penetrate the meat, get the seasoning all the way down to the middle of it. Well, just like with the pork butts we just did a bit ago, it's really hard to oversalt this. Um, I'm going to use, in a, in a, in a, when, I, when I go to cook it, I'll use some, probably use some Frank's Red Hot as a binder. I like using that. I don't know why. I don't know if it really does a ton to impart flavor. It's just kind of what I've always done. I, and I like having it on there. And then I will season it with some coarse ground black pepper, some 16 mesh black pepper. Um, so I will show you that process, of course, when Tuesday night, Tuesday night, it's Memorial Day. It's Sunday, Saturday. What, what, what is, oh boy, I'm losing it. Monday. It is Monday. I think I want to take a little bit more out right here. It's Monday, Memorial Day. That's what day it is. So yeah, again, we'll have like a day and a half. There we go. Uh, for this uh, dry brine in the fridge, just sits uncovered on a rack. Takes up a bunch of space in the fridge, but that's okay. I think we're looking pretty good here. As the salt, first it's gonna start drawing moisture out, and then uh, due to osmosis and uh, physics, the salt will go back into the meat with liquid. Makes for a juicy brisket, makes for a well-seasoned brisket. And this one should be good. I'm sad I had to take off so much of the flat. I actually like the if a, a good well cooked flat i think i like better than the point so uh there's the first brisket again i won't show you the whole process of the second brisket but i will give you a couple snapshots as i trim it up all right this is the second brisket you can see already this part's thicker the meat's thicker i'm gonna trim probably this corner down a bit but we won't have to take too much off the end here in order to get a thicker flat so that's good it seems like a little more a little more funky stuff going on up here that we got to trim off but the flat is better on this one and again i'll show you the third one as well but i don't think you need to watch me trim this whole thing up so uh we'll be back with the third brisket in a few minutes all right this is the third brisket again this side of the flat is excellent this one here is still again a bit thin that is one of the downsides of ordering briskets online is you can't see what you're getting uh usually snake river farms is great i've had great success with their briskets in the past this one isn't bad i've seen a lot worse than that but uh it should be fine that one should be fine i was able to i think i was able to trim it up good enough uh so it will be delicious when cooked might need to take this side down a bit more yeah there we go that's what we need and this, of course, like I said, I'll trim that off, grind it up, whole big bowl of scraps. If you like beef tallow, if you like making your own tallow, you can use all that fat for that. I got a couple bags of fat in the freezer from previous brisket cooks, so I'm not gonna render any beef tallow out of that. I'll just throw it away uh, after I get all the good lean part off for, for burgers. But, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're making, tomorrow's Tuesday. We're making potato salad, we'll make beans, we'll start the stock for the ham hocks, or for the, uh, with uh, stock and ham hocks for the collard greens, and at about midnight, we'll get these briskets and the pork butts on the smokers, and again, I'll bring you along for that journey, so thanks for watching, and thanks for sticking with me, and uh, a couple more days, and we'll be eating this, and it's going to be delicious. Hey, we're on Tuesday now. So tomorrow we eat, but today we do a lot of cooking. Getting a lot of the side dishes prepped. 
you can tell what this is, baked beans. We got like 12, 28 ounce cans. Again, we're feeding about 75 people, so should be enough for about a half a can per. If you're doing big cooks, get yourself a big bowl like this. Makes things so much easier than trying to stir big batches of stuff in a small bowl. I'll use the same bowl for potato salad. I use it for big batches of coleslaw. Makes everything much easier. Uh, so basically I took two pounds of some of my homemade bacon and chopped it up, made bacon bits out of it. That's in here. I got a sauteed sweet onion. We got some uh, of that, uh, the Kansas City barbecue sauce we made a couple days ago. We got that in here. We got uh, a couple cups of the, that, uh, the rub that we made. That's in here as well. What else we got in here? Brown sugar, ketchup, mustard, Worcestershire sauce. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, if you want the recipe I kind of start with, go look at Malcolm Reed's uh, How to Barbecue Right uh, Barbecue Baked Beans recipe. Uh, pretty simple recipe. You just kind of mix everything together then throw it on the smoker for a couple hours. Works out well because I usually try to get the briskets off at around noon, maybe one o'clock. Uh, we're eating at six, so that leaves plenty of time in the afternoon to throw these on the smoker for a couple hours and get uh, some nice sm smoke flavor. It helps cook everything down a bit so they thicken up. Uh, they're pretty, they're a nice sweet bean recipe. It's not a spicy recipe. It's, it's nothing like that, uh, but it is delicious. It's one of the best, better ones I've had. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with throwing some cans of Bush's baked beans on the smoker and just cooking that, but... Uh, I want these to be a little bit nicer than that. So uh, I just make my own. So we'll put these in foil pans and uh, get them in the fridge tonight. And then, like I said, tomorrow we'll pull them out and smoke them. And that's uh, that's the baked beans. Uh, I think they're delicious. I need to give them a taste here in a minute. But uh, yeah, not, not a lot to it. Just some simple ingredients. Again, if you're making barbecue sauce, if you're making rub, make sure you make some extra because this calls for, for every batch it takes a cup of barbecue sauce and a half cup of rub so I'm making a quadruple batch so I needed four cups of sauce uh, I ran out of the stuff I made I didn't want to dip into the bottles that I that, I, that I'm gonna have for serving so I just used some other barbecue sauce I had in the fridge and then uh, should have plenty of rub used takes half a cup per batch so again two cups of rub and that gives it a lot of the seasoning since that rub I used doesn't have salt you need to add some salt to this one too. If you if you use a commercial rub that has has a bunch of salt, uh, you can pretty much use any any kind of pork rub you want. Any any all purpose rub uh, works for this recipe. Uh, but if your rub does not have salt, make sure you add some salt to it. So, all right, baked beans is done. Again, we'll put these in a pan. And uh, the next thing, I think I'll chop some cabbage for some coleslaw. It's time for coleslaw. We got three heads of cabbage. I'll shred it up in about six carrots. And I've put, uh, what, almost two cups of sugar, a cup of salt in here. Don't worry, it may sound like a lot, but uh, mix it all up. And then after about 10 or 15 minutes, that, uh, I like to pull any big chunks like that out. Any, uh, the salt's gonna pull out some moisture, the sugar's gonna kind of tenderize and, and help season the cabbage and the carrots. And uh, after about, like I said, 10 or 15 minutes, we're gonna rinse all this off, put it through a salad spinner. Uh, so a lot of that sugar and salt ends up getting rinsed off after it's done its job here. And then we make a dressing, which is gonna be mostly a vinegar-based slaw. It's not a, not a, a uh, mayonnaise-based. It's primarily vinegar, there's some oil, some sugar, black pepper, celery seed, and I think it makes a perfect complement to uh, pulled pork. It's, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a vinegary slaw. So uh, we'll be back in a bit to show you that. All right, slaw has been rinsed, sat in the salt and uh, sugar for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. And now it's time for the dressing, which is uh, apple cider vinegar. There's some olive oil, celery seed, which I think is the, uh, the key to this one. Some salt and pepper. Uh, the recipe calls for garlic. I don't like it with garlic at all. It calls for shredding an onion in it. I don't like onions, so I don't put those in. So I'll, I'll put links to all the recipes I'm using, uh, at least the recipes I'm starting with, 
down in the uh, down below in the description. So be sure to check those out if you want. If you want, um, like I said, they're, they're starting points. Some of them I follow more closely than others. Some of them I just kind of use to remember some different ingredient ratios. But uh, you can just mix this all together, and this is a nice vinegary slaw that fits perfect with uh, with pork. My wife really likes it. Uh, honestly, if it wasn't for her, I might not make the slaw, but she likes it so much that I pretty much have to make it every time I make pulled pork, which I'm happy to do. So, this is it. Got potato salad coming up next. All right, time for some potato salad. We got about 20 pounds of potatoes here. Here we have some uh, apple cider vinegar. And what I like to do is spritz the potatoes after they're cooked. I like kind of cooking them until they're, you see parts of them are almost falling apart. They get like the nice starchy coating on the outside. That's how I like <clears throat> my potatoes. If you like them a little bit firmer, don't cook them as much. If you like them more, uh, almost like a mashed potato salad, keep cooking them a little longer. So we're gonna spritz these. This recipe, <clears throat> excuse me, got some potato in my throat is a is a, a similar is, is a takeoff of uh kenji's potato salad recipe on serious eats and again i'll put that on um i probably use more vinegar than he does i like that vinegary potato salad taste so we'll spritz these a little more give them a stir then let them spritz them again let them cool down a bit uh tell about room temperature and then we'll put together the well we're waiting for it to cool we'll put together the dressing We'll cut up some uh, pickles, celery. We've got some hard boiled eggs. Gonna put some bacon bits. Um, I think that's all the mix ins I have. Uh, you can kind of put in whatever you want. Whatever you like in your potato salad, go ahead and throw it in. Some people don't like eggs. Some people really like eggs. So I like them. So I'm gonna put them in. So we'll give them a stir. Give them another spritz. And then. Takes about probably half hour, 45 minutes for them to cool to room temperature. So plenty of time to get everything else ready. I don't know if you could hear the bacon sizzling away over on the stove, but we got uh, two pounds of bacon bits we're throwing in here. About 10 ribs of celery, I think a dozen hard boiled eggs. Uh, I almost like the mix-ins more than the potatoes in the potato salad, but it's all delicious. So yeah, we'll just let this uh, cool down, absorb some of this vinegar and we're good to go. So we'll be back when we when we mix everything together. We're gonna take a little break from potato salad and we're gonna get these pork butts and briskets seasoned up and out on the smoker. Then we'll come back and finish potato salad. Uh, I like to use a uh, mustard slather, just yellow mustard. Don't need to do this. You can use pretty much anything you want on it. Mustard's what I've always done, so that's what I'm gonna keep doing. So. Nothing fancy to it. You just got to rub your binder all over it. You can use apple cider vinegar for this if you want. You can use just water. Uh, a lot of times you don't even need it. But it's kind of what I've always done. So why change a good thing? You just want to season it all over it. When I cook it, I want to make sure I have this side up with a fat cap. I don't know if it matters all that much. But... We'll start out seasoning the sides. We want to be pretty liberal with this seasoning. Again, this is the uh, Meathead Memphis meat dust that I made a couple days ago. And I love it on pork. It's a nice sweet rub. There's quite a bit of sugar in it. You get a nice dark bark on your meat because of the sugar. Also has enough seasoning in there where you get some good flavor. So I like to go pretty heavy on it. There's no reason to be shy with it. Again, you're talking about an eight pound chunk of meat here. So it's gonna be hard to over season this thing. Once you cook it and get all that bark broken down and mixed in with everything as you pull it, it's gonna be delicious. So yeah, that's about all it is. Again, I used I don't know, a little less than half of this jar. This is just a, a pizza shaker. I think it's it's great. A lot of rub jars and, and uh, the containers that, that commercial rubs come in, I think the holes are too small for it to come out nice and even, but this, just a Parmesan pizza 
Parmesan cheese shaker. I think these work great. I think it's just the right aperture of holes here for uh, the meat to come, the, or the, the rub to come through nicely. So I'm gonna season up the rest of these and then we'll move on to the briskets. All right, time to get these briskets done up. Uh, I like to use Frank Shred Hot as a slather here. Again, I don't really have a reason why. It's not coming out very well. Um, it's just kind of what I've always done. I don't think the hot sauce imparts much flavor, but it does help the pepper to stick. So we'll get that kind of slathered up. Again, this is totally optional. You don't need to use a slather. I just kind of like doing it. Feels good to rub the meat. And for seasoning, all I'm using, remember we had the salt a couple days ago, so that's already on here. And we're using some 16 mesh black pepper. This stuff's from Spiceology. They're a local company here, so I like supporting them. But any coarse black pepper, or extra coarse, it's uh, 16 mesh. Uh, you can find it online, number of different places. Uh, Costco sells a coarse ground pepper that's pretty good if you can't find uh, the extra coarse. Not quite as good, not quite as chunky, but it'll it'll do in a pinch. And I like to go pretty heavy on this. I like using my hands. I don't like shaking this out of the bottle. This stuff's usually too big to come through the shakers anyway. So I like to go fairly heavy on this. It ends up the fat, the pepper, the smoke, everything all kind of melts together and makes for a delicious brisket, nice bark. It's a nice peppery bite, cut, helps cut through some of the fat and the meat and all that. So don't be shy. I know kind of over the last couple of years, people have started using more like seasoning salt. Uh, there's kind of debates on whether Franklin Barbecue in Texas uses that or not. And you can see conflicting reports on if they've admitted they do or not, but I just like using pepper. I think it's the way to go. Make sure you get all the sides. A lot of it's gonna fall off. It's not all gonna stick, but that's okay. That's why you go kind of heavy. And on the top here, of course, nothing's gonna fall off because this is the side that's gonna be up while we're cooking. I like cooking with the fat side up. Some people put it down. Uh, but yeah, I keep it up when I do it. So you see we used almost a whole ramekin of black pepper on this. I think we're about good. I miss any spots? That's about what I like it to look like. You want to see a little bit of meat and fat showing through, but you want a pretty good coverage on it. So that's what my brisket's going to look like before it cooks. And uh, in, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, we'll be taking these out to the smoker and getting them on. I got some charcoal heating up right now. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. It's going to be dark out there because it's uh, midnight. But... I'll, I'll do my best. I got a couple lights and uh, let me get these other two seasoned up and we'll be out at the grills. All right, we're out at the grill. This is my Weber 26 inch kettle and this is what we're cooking the pork butts on. Got those out here. Again, it's dark out here. I got some lights going, but I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Got some coals heating up here. So we'll put oh, a few in here. That looks about enough. That might be a couple too many. Might grab a couple out of there. Let me get my... Here we go. A lot of this probably won't look good on camera, but that's okay. We'll take a few of these out, put a few too many in. We'll just save them over there for the next grill. Uh, this is B&B. &B charcoal briquettes it's this orange bag here i like them uh jealous devil makes good briquettes weber used to make my favorite but they stopped making them and when they stopped making them home depot had a sale for five bucks a bag and i bought like 50 or 60 bags of them and i only have half a dozen or so left 
So I kind of ration those out and save them for really special occasions. I don't know why this isn't a special occasion, but the B&B &B works great. So then I just want to fill the rest of this with more charcoal. Should get, uh, this is I get, this is the regular size slow here. It's not the XL. I have two different XLs, but I'll be using those on the ranch kettle here. And that's kind of cool to see. But uh, I got water in the reservoir. Uh, let me get a couple wood chunks. It's just the standard bag of wood chunks you buy at the hardware store. This is apple wood. Nothing too special. Uh, I like apple and pecan for pork. And again, this is gonna make the grate a little bit crooked, but I don't really care. So three or four chunks. Don't need a ton, just enough to give some smoke. Again, like I said, this is gonna make the grill slanty just with the wood sticking up, but it's gonna cook just fine. I've never had a problem with it. So let's load some pork butts up. It is kind of a tight fit with four of these in here. And sometimes you gotta turn them around and kind of finagle them in to get, get them to fit. But four pork butts do fit on the Weber 26. And they'll shrink down a bit over the, over the first few hours and you can kind of space them out a little bit more. Um, let's get a thermometer going. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's over here. For this, I got the Thermoworks Smoke. This is the uh, older version. They got the Smoke X4, which I'm gonna use on the other kettle because it has four probes and I like to probe each brisket. Pork butts, it's not as critical to keep as accurate a temperature. You wanna keep a good temperature, but not quite as critical. Now you can wait and wait for your grill to get hot enough, but honestly it takes 10 minutes. So it's not gonna be, it's not horrible to just put your stuff on right away. It's getting kind of smoky here. So yeah, it only takes 10 minutes or so for this to get hot. I like to run anywhere between 250 and 275 when I when I do this. Um, I don't get too tied up in like one specific temperature to run at. As long as I'm anywhere in the vicinity of 250 even 225 to 300 anywhere between there i'm not too upset if it's middle of the night and i'm asleep and it's the grills at 280 i don't care i'm staying asleep i'm not waking up so we will tuck this away make sure our vents are all where they need to be that one's about halfway open and this one just a little bit open for now and we'll see how the temperatures kind of normalize. The smoke will clean up here in just a couple minutes. But uh, yeah, we wanna run, like I said, around 250 to 275. Don't trust the dome thermometer. That's always gonna be off. Use your great thermometer here. Like I said right now it's 88, 90, it's going up. Um, actually I have these reversed. I have alarms set on them. So we'll switch the probes. There we go, because this one has 181 to 32 for the meat. So, and I mean, I, I don't really care about this for a few hours. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, like I said, I have this at 225 and 300. As long as it's between there, I'm okay with it. I try to shoot for 250 to 275. If we're six hours in and things are going really slow, I'll bump it up. If it's going too fast, I'll lo lower it down. But I've got a long way to go before we think about that. So these are on. And in a couple minutes, I'll be out and we'll put the briskets on. All right, time to get the briskets on. This is my ranch kettle. It's uh, 36, 37 inches wide. I got two slow ones here, XLs going. Got hot coals back there, hot coals up here. So the heat will go that way. We'll cook the briskets. Three of them fit on here pretty well. Depending on the size of the brisket, it can be a bit of a tight fit, but these are on the smaller side. So shouldn't have too many problems. We'll just set all three of these in here. Yeah, those fit on no problem. Let's get some thermometers going. Mm. Got the Smoke X4. 
four probes. We'll put the temperature grate, temperature probe right there. Let's pull this one down a little bit. Again, as these cook, these are gonna shrink up quite a bit. Where's my, there's my temperature probe, my air probe. I got a probe for each of the briskets so we can keep a good track on those. We'll plug them all in, we'll get them going. And for this, I'm gonna use uh, post oak wood chunks. I like that, like oak for beef. It's kind of what they use in Texas, so if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. This is kind of a Texas style brisket, so. Uh, yeah, all right, well, I'll just get the rest of the probes in here, put a few wood chunks in, close this up, and uh, let these start going. We'll probably come back and check it. I don't know when I'll come check it. I got some alarm going off somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come check it sometime in a, in a couple hours. We'll check the temperatures. We'll probably start spritzing. Spritzing is totally optional. I like using just apple juice. We'll probe that one right there. And again, these probes, I'll probably need to adjust the probes at some point and get them in a little bit better spot to better track when this is actually done. But this gives me a good idea. If it starts getting up to 150, 160, 170, I know I need to come check it and see how it is. Um, so, uh, my yeah, my probe placement isn't always spot on the first time. I like to shoot for where the flat and the point meet and try to get it right in the middle. Sometimes you nail it, sometimes you don't, but again, not that big a deal if you're a little if you're a few degrees off here and there and again we'll check these again in a couple hours probably we'll start spritzing and uh getting all that going and make sure the temperatures of these are, are cruising right along again we want the smoker running 250 275 anywhere in there i'm perfectly fine with all right so that's the briskets on and uh we'll be back in a bit hopefully when it's light out i'll be able to show you a little bit more but for now these are these are cooking away all right meats on the smokers it's cooking away got our potatoes in our giant bowl again if you don't have a big bowl like this and you're cooking large batches of food get yourself one this is a 30 quart uh it does great for this you can easily mix it without sloshing stuff everywhere making a big mess uh here's our dressing i just mixed it in with the uh celery and the pickles i use cornichons for this it's where i got four cups of mayonnaise about half a cup of mustard half a cup of vinegar half a cup of sugar and that's like all the dressing part of it maybe some yeah some black pepper some salt we'll just mix all this together and we'll see how it is it ends up not being super gloppy I kind of like really mayonnaise gloppy potato salad. Uh, really like really mayonnaise macaroni salad like you get in Hawaii. That's actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift spatulas. But yeah, it, it'll give a good coating. It's not like you're eating just spoonfuls of mayonnaise as you're doing this. A few more mixes. We'll add in our bacon. Yeah, I might as well just use it all. Again, that was uh, like two pounds of bacon, and we got about a dozen hard-boiled eggs that we've chopped up, and those go in. If When you get a bite that has nice creamy potato, a little egg, a little crunchy cucumber, tart pickle, potato salad's wonderful. I'm a big fan. We'll just give this a good mix. Again, I like it when the potatoes are slightly falling apart and they kind of kind of mush all together a little bit. That's how I like it. How you like it, do it how you like it. And again, you can add whatever you like to this. If you like onions, add onions. Uh, if you want to put parsley in or, or uh, scallions or anything like that, go ahead. Potato salad can take a lot of different things. So yeah, this is about mixed. We'll taste it and see if we need to add some salt. I think I could use a little bit of salt. Give it 
this is always one of the things people really enjoy when I make it. It's it's uh, a lot of people don't think to add sugar to their uh, dressing or vinegar things like that. I think it adds a lot. Again, this is kind of based off uh, Kenji's potato salad recipe and all these recipes. Like I said, I'll, I'll link them all in the description down below and go check them out. There'll also be links to a lot of the different equipment I use and uh, you can go check all that out. But right now it's almost one o'clock in the morning and uh, I want to get some sleep. So I'm going to put this in some foil pans, get it in the fridge, wash some dishes and lay down for a bit and see how this, see how the uh, meat's coming along. It is about 7.30 in the morning. So we've had a little over seven hours on this meat here. These pork butts are looking good. A couple little spots here where like where the lid was touching that that aren't getting color. So I'm gonna try to move, move these around a little bit. Get a little more space in them now that these have shrunk down a bit. Ooh, they're hot. I still got quite a ways to go. They're only 170 degrees. So they should be hitting the stall pretty quick. So we'll close that back up. Temperatures ran pretty steady through the night. That one, about five o'clock in the morning, I had to come refill the charcoal. And here's the briskets. These are looking beautiful. Let's give them a little spritz. Bark's starting to get nice and set. Uh, I usually like to wrap briskets after the stall. And these are sitting right at 165 or so right now. So another, another hour or two, and I'm thinking we should be ready to go. But uh, so yeah, this is, these are the two kettles we got going. Let me turn this alarm off. There we go. Uh, we got Weber 26, the Weber Ranch Kettle. I love this one for big cooks. Uh, once you get the temperature dialed in, it's, it's steady as a rock. And you can see we've been running seven and a half hours or so, and we still got a decent amount of charcoal left. We'll have to put some more in there in a bit, just to make sure we don't, uh, temperatures don't drop too low but we'll, we'll deal with that in a while. Still got a bit to go. So these are the two, when I do big cooks, these are the two grills I use. And uh, yeah, we'll just let these keep cooking. I think it's time to wrap these briskets. See how much they shrunk up? That's pretty normal for a brisket. I usually plan on getting about half of the starting weight after you trim, after it shrinks. So 14 pound brisket, you're gonna get about seven pounds of meat. The bark's feeling good. Starting to get all nice and jiggly. Let's wrap this up. Again, just like trimming. I'm not an expert wrapper. I do what I can. We'll give it one little last spritz. Try to keep it as tight as you can. Doesn't always work, but you try. Kind of fold that in. Unwrap, and I didn't make the paper quite long enough, but that's okay. These dang alarms have been getting me all day. All right, we'll put this probe back in. At this point, you're just kind of guessing where the probe goes. So you're just going to get it uh, in there, and then you can use another probe to kind of feel for where things go. But briskets are wrapped. I'll get the other two. Uh, pork butt's still got a ways to go. It's what's well, about 9.30 right now. So these are right on schedule. Should be done right about noon. This one is a little more done than the others, but... Uh, we'll keep this cooking. I'll get those other two wrapped up. All right, all the food is done, pretty much. We got four pork butts in there. I moved those to the big smoker partway through the day. We got briskets in here. We got pickles, pickled red onions. Gonna have some collard greens going over there. We got baked beans in here, staying warm. We got, what do we got in here? We got 
banana puddings, we got potato salads, we got coleslaw, we got all kinds of stuff going on. So we're just getting ready. Uh, probably about an hour or so and I'll pull the pork. We're gonna slice the brisket to go uh, as people come through the line. But uh, I wish you could smell this. It smells delicious. So these cooked up really well, I think. The pork butts, uh, I think will be great. Briskets, it's so hard to know until you cut them. So we'll see. I don't know if I'll be able to get a video of that part. But uh, that's kind of the whole cook. We're all done. It's been four or five days of a lot of work. And uh, I can't wait to eat and taste it. It's so hard to know when you are cooking something for 10, 12, 14 hours, whatever. You have no idea if it's going to be good or not until you actually cut into it. Let me see if I can. There we go. There's some of the, there's the briskets down in there. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about anything, uh, please ask. Again, I'll put links to uh, different recipes, all the equipment I use, all that stuff. This smells so good. I can't wait to eat. So thanks for watching along. And uh, I'll do this again sometime. This is kind of fun. All right, we're ready to serve. We got brisket here. We got pork, sauce, coleslaw, potato salad, beans are in there. We got collards, we got pickles, pickled red onions, biscuits. These are my wife's biscuits. Don't they look amazing? And we got some drinks. We got desserts over there. All this great food. Thanks for joining me in this journey and watching along. Can't wait to cut into these briskets and see how they are. So, yeah, if you're still around in this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and do all those fun things. This pork is great, by the way. Got these nice barky pieces there. Those are just wonderful. So, thanks for watching again.